turning into development, when you're developing uh, some small but very large projects mostly, you run into the problem of modeling roles. Cons for example, consider an airline reservation system. There are ticket agents, there's passenger, there's crew, and they're all employees of the, of the airline system, right? So one can model it with inheritance. You can have an employee class here at the beginning, and then you have a crew member that inherits from employee, a ticket agent that inherits from employee, and a passenger that inherits from employee. However, the crew member is an employee with certain other attributes. The ticket agent is also an employee with different attributes than the crew member. And the passenger is, uh, could be an employee with different attributes, right? So I'm thinking of, a pass of, of one employee that acts, that's also a passenger in the airline. Now, here's what, where, where things can get dicey. Well, a ticket agent can also be a crew member, right? So many, oftentimes it is the case that at the counter you're being helped by a crew member that also acts as a ticket agent. Uh, a ticket agent might also be a passenger, right? So they fly in their, own, in their own airlines. And a crew member can be a ticket agent and a passenger, right? So one employee can have multiple roles in the company. So... You basically, if you wanted to do inheritance, you would need a class called Ticket Agent Crew because that would be a ticket agent that's also a crew member. You can have Passenger Ticket Agent when the, pass the ticket agent is also a passenger, or you can have Passenger Crew when the crew member is also a passenger, etc. And then any number of classes that inherit from employee. But it would be painful to create and maintain these classes. Besides, you don't know whether passenger goes at the beginning or at the end, so the naming conventions are totally, um, totally off, off, the, off, the, off the map. So let's look a little bit about, let's think about the relationship that these roles have to the main class. <clears throat> what is the relationship of a subclass to its parent? And then we're going to think about what is the relationship of the crew member, ticket agent, and passenger to its parent, to, for, to employee. Well, the inheritance model, the regular inheritance model, is, an, is a relationship. Basically, what we had in the previous figure, right? So what we had here, so we, we have a crew member is a employee. A ticket agent is an employee. A passenger is a employee okay our problem though is that we require a relationship of the kind is a role played by right so we need a relationship that says that says crew member is a role played by an employee ticket agent is a role played by an, an employee an employee passenger is a role played by an employee an employee and then the um, the idea would then be to say well uh, employee can play this role and this role, or an employee can play all these roles, right? Or all these roles can be played by an employee talking in our in our relationships um, uh, lingo. Sometimes, uh, some people inherit utility classes for simplicity, to, to simplify some things, but it's risky and it's not usually more efficient. For example, a lot of people might want to inherit from a hash map and then use hash maps to define roles and whatnot, but that might not be as efficient as you want. And then um, if you wanted to reuse components, well, it would be very hard to reuse a class with that long name, right? A class called Ticket Agent Passenger Crew. That would be a class that is so unique to the problem that we're attacking that its reusability is questionable. So how can we save this design? Well, there's one little pattern, meaning one of those best practices to deal with objects, right? That that could be very helpful here, and that is, um, and that is the delegate pattern, the delegate pattern. Okay. So the idea would be that every new class has an instance of the original class, and then it's more general than instant than than inheritance. It can get messy in terms, of, so so you must respect naming conventions. But it would it would have been the same on the other in the other end. So it it is more like this: you have a class called crew member that has a variable in it 
of kind employee. You have a ticket agent that has a variable employee and you have a passenger that has a variable employee, right? So, so for example, if you have an employee who is both a crew member and a ticket agent, well, your implementation of crew member might have this employee variable pointing to John Smith, and one implementation of ticket agent, or one instance of ticket agent, might also have John Smith as its employee attribute. Basically, you make this class here, the one that is common to all, you make it a member variable in the roles that it can be that it can play. Um, now, in the context of mobile apps, this is widely used. And when do apps use it? Well, mostly, for example, when drawing components. Okay, apps allow you to draw components, uh, to draw components and customize what they draw. Okay, and that customization can be done in a delegate uh, class. Okay, so let me let me go through an example. So, for example, I have a calculator that has some messages on the screen, right? And I have the view part of it, which extends a JFrame, that me meaning it's a, it's a viewable interface, right? And I'm going to call it CalcView2. Now, I will have a member variable called delegate of the, of the type viewDelegate. We're going to define viewDelegate later. But here's the thing. I'm going to label all the labels in my, in my calculator. And then there's a label input text, which says input, right? But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to say, if the delegate is null, then put the word input. Otherwise, call the method getControlText from the delegate with the parameter input, OK? Basically, what this method should return is the word for input. The delegate.getController, getControlText, if I give it total, OK, this should return something that could be replaced could replace the world total and so on and so forth so for all my labels here i'm going to have a default here in english but i'm going to actually ask a method of the delegate to return me the text that i need there if the delegate is not null so let's look at what this delegate might look like and this might make all sense we're going to have first an interface, view delegate. We're going to see why we need this interface later. And this interface is going to have one method, get control text, and I'm going to give it the button or the label name. So, and here's a class, right? I'm going to have a class that implements view delegate. And what it's going to say is it has this get control text method here. Okay? I'm going to give it a name. So if the name is total, then I'm going to return the word total with a capital T. If the name is multiply, then I'm going to return the string times it. If the, if the name is clear, then I'm going to return the string start over. If the name is input, I'm going to return number, colon, right? Otherwise, I'm just going to return some garbage. This is what this calc view delegate does. Okay, calc view delegate basically has a method, and depending on what I pass here, it returns a particular text. So if we go back to our to our calc view uh, class, whenever if I set this delegate to be a new calc view delegate, okay, an instance of this class. So if I say, if I set uh, I'm sorry if I set this delegate to be an instance of the previous class, when I say delegate dot get control text and I give the text input goes to the delegate, it, pass, it calls this method with the string input, and it goes there to switch. Oh, if it's input, then I'm going to return the word number. So the label input text will say number. Okay? <clears throat> Sorry I'm going back and forth, but you can, you can uh, come back and slow it down. If I call this delegate with get control text total, I'm going to go to the delegate now see what happens. If I call this delegate with a word total, well, it's going to return the word total with a capital T. Going back now. If I call this delegate with get control text and the word multiply, it will return, here's multiply, it will return times it. Okay? So this label here, label multiply text, 
it's going to have the string multiply it. And this is what the delegate does. Now, this seems very silly because I might have, I could have just typed the, the strings, right? But what happens, say, for example, if you, um, if you want to make it, uh, say, if you want to make this speak Spanish, you might create another delegate, right? Another CalcView delegate. By the way, yeah. That implements the view delegate. Now, you can ask this delegate, get control text, and given the same strings as names, you can just return different words, this time in Spanish. Okay? So then, in your view, absolutely nothing changes. The only thing that changes is in your view, you set the delegate either to the Spanish delegate or to the English delegate, and the text will just know what to do because you're calling whatever the delegate is this method. So, when I said earlier, why is it important that, that it's an interface? Well, because you can change a lot of the methods in the delegate, but the main class, the CalcView2, should know what methods to call, regardless of your implementation. And that is what interfaces do. Okay? Uh, interfaces allow the developer to follow a protocol, right? To, to ask for very specific method names. And then, because they implement an interface, other objects can also use these methods. And this is basically the delegate pattern. Basically, some class delegates some functionality to a different class. And then the user, say for example you, you can modify the delegate or create a, de a specific delegate for a particular problem that you're trying to solve and just plug it into, uh, into the class that uses that delegate. 